YouTube. Today I am at Torp Sandgerford Airport, which is marketed by Ryanair as Oslo Airport. It's actually not really near Oslo at all, uh, which obviously we only found out after we booked the flight. So there is a, also a one and a half hour train ride to take us into Oslo itself, which cost nearly as much as the plane. But oh well. So we've come to Norway, spending a long weekend here. This has to be one of the uh, the most spectacular scenes I've seen as we descend and get the fantastic view of the fjords and the just kind of wilderness, which we might be able to see some more of from the train. Hello and welcome to Greetings from Oslo. So we are now on board the shuttle bus which will take us to Torp station and from there we'll get a train into Oslo. It's faster than the coach but the coach goes straight from the airport so actually if you tally it up the coach is probably faster but oh well. That's the arrival from Sandstead. Well that was quick. We could we could easily have we could easily have walked that. Candy. Shut up. Where did it pick up at Is it possible that we should have picked up? So yeah, this is actually a lot closer to the airport than I thought. It's in the village of Rastad. <coughs> uh, this train is not heading towards Oslo, I believe it's heading in the other direction. And it is in fact a Stadler flirt. Just the Norwegian variant. So there aren't actually, they don't actually seem to be ticket redeeming facilities here, so we've decided to go back to the airport, pick up our train tickets and then come back here. Here we are at Torp Station once again, this time with our tickets. I'm quite surprised you can't actually pick up the tickets here because they, it was all they had one small machine at the airport. It would, make, it would make sense to have one here as well. Anyway, I'm very very impressed with the the bus system because it's basically a shuttle that comes here from the airport. It's free. Waits for the train to arrive. Waits for it to leave, and then takes the people who've got off the train right to the airport. So it's incredibly smooth and efficient. I think this is our train that is now arriving. So the train in question is a Stadler Flirt, so if you are from East Anglia, take note, because trains very similar to this uh, will come to London Liverpool Street in the near future. sitting on the wrong side actually.
So we've made it to Oslo Central, which has quite interesting architecture. Not sure if I quite like it, but I've definitely never seen anything like it before. So we are probably going to head straight to our flat first, and then we might stop off to eat and walk around and get to know the city a little bit. So out at the station now, we've arrived in Oslo, in style. And we are now going to head to our flocks, drop our stuff. Oh wait, I've said this already. So here is our Airbnb flat. Now at this point I would like to mention that the original plan was for all four of us to come. And then there was the Manchester Derby, which my dad managed to get tickets for. And he just forgot that we were meant to be in Oslo that weekend. So dad and Naam have stayed home. And it's just me and Naam, uh, me and mum. <laughs> Uh, coming to Oslo. So we have a flat that is way too big for us, but you know There are worse. There are worse problems in life So uh, we've now had our first proper taste of the Norwegian cuisine. We are now having, having been well fed We are now going to walk down to the waterside and See what there is to see in Oslo it is chilly, but the sun is out, and it is quite pleasant. Yeah, it's actually, it's actually a lot warmer than it was before. It was chilly when we got here, but it has warmed up, and it is lovely and sunny. Here we are outside the Anstrup Finley Museum, which is now closed. Actually closed about five minutes ago. Uh, but we've come to take a look at the, the general kind of vicinity in the building because it is pretty, pretty architecturally. I'd use the word spectacular. Yeah. I have no idea what this is, but it is tall. It's like a lift. Yeah, it is. You can go up and get a view. Unfortunately, it is closed. I don't know what this is, but it scares me. is the Akershus Fortress, which is one of the things to do in Oslo, but unfortunately it is currently closed for renovation, so we can't go inside. We've still come to have a look. We're going to keep walking around a bit, end up somewhere on the eastern end of the city centre, uh, where we'll probably then hop on a tram and go back to the flat. It's not very late yet, but we are both quite tired from an early start and lots of walking, so we might take it light this evening but we are formulating our plans tomorrow and there are lots of boats involved. 
so we should get to see some good scenery. Why are there two red stock men? I've, every street, every street sign we've seen, so every uh, traffic light we've seen so far, has them. It's very strange. Never seen it anywhere else before. Also, I like how you've got a lot of cycle infrastructure here in Oslo. Good place to be a cyclist. So we have made it to the Opera House, which is due south of the station. So we have completed the circle across Oslo. Mm. So this is the Opera House. Quite a spectacular building. It's almost symmetrical, but not quite. So we are now on top of the Opera House, with good view of Oslo, and I just realised there are a ton of cranes, just why are there so many cranes? Clearly there's a lot of regeneration taking part in this particular corner of Oslo. Just in general, across the whole city I've noticed, there are an unusual amount of cranes. Doing a lot of rebuilding work. Here we are at Jeunebaun Torget, which is the closest stop to Oslo Central Station. We're now getting the tram 18 back to Hol Holzburg Platz, which is where our flat is for the night. So on board the tram. I missed the shot coming in, but it's never mind. Holberg's class. Uh, by the way, these are request stops, but it's not very, it's not very w well um, marked as being such. So we very nearly missed our stop. So it is now Saturday, day two. Today we are going museum hopping on the peninsula of Big Doy. Uh, you can get there on the bus 30, or you can take a boat there, which we're doing because it's a bit more exciting. We're now boarding the museum boat. It's not really a ferry. <laughs> it's just a 10 minute hop over to the Big Doy Peninsula. So this is the first stop, Dronningen. And then the second stop is just over there, and we're going to the second stop to go to some museums. So this is the second stop in Big Doy. It's not pronounced like that, I'm sure. Um, there are a number of museums here, including the uh, Polar Ship Museum and the Maritime Museum. That's the, uh, the Polar Ship Museum, or the Fram, as it is known. How does this work? 
the globe is turning. Huh? How? Yeah. Really weird. So this is the Norwegian Polar Exploration Ship Museum thingamajig. There's two ships here. This is the first one, the bigger one, Fram, from 1892, uh, a polar exploration ship. And next door is the Gioia, I don't know how to pronounce it, it's GJ Funny O A. Let's have a little brand. So this is the second boat, the Gioia. That's how it's written. I don't know how to pronounce it. So the so the Fram uh, sat in ice for several years and was used to observe the kind of um, currents within the ice. Whilst as the Gioia was the first to traverse the Northwest Passage, which runs kind of via Greenland and northern Canada to Alaska and the Bering Strait which is expected to become a major shipping route over the next few decades as this sea ice melts. So that was the Fram and Joya the museum. Uh, we're now going to go see the Norwegian Holocaust Centre. So we are now deep into the Oslo suburbs. got off the bus at Hook and there's a way through there but it's quite steep and I think mum wants us to walk around instead so uh, no adventure through the forest this time around meanwhile we are deep in the Oslo suburbs on the Big Dory Peninsula uh, so attempt two we've now come to different stop whose name I can't remember. So even though we were actually, uh, as the crow flies, probably the closest stop, there's a kind of patch of forest with no official walkways through. I think we, we could have walked through it, <laughs> uh, but no, instead we've gone a, a long way around via the bus and now we're going to complete the circle uh, on foot. That well, was an, an eventful adventure through the Norwegian suburbs. Ooh, look at that house, that looks mm -hmm. good. Look at that one. So it is now past 4pm, which means all the museums on this peninsula are now closed, as are probably most of the ones in Oslo. So we've learned that there have never been many Jews in Norway, partially because there was actually a law forbidding them from entering until 1851. So there are about 700 Norwegian Jews killed in the Holocaust, but there are a lot of Norwegians who were actually quite sympathetic to the Jews and helped a lot of them escape. So yeah, there's some positives in there as well. So we're at Fredericksburg because the bus does a funny loop. Uh, it means we can't, we, can get, we were able to go direct from the boat stop to Hook, but we can't go direct from Hook to the boat stop. So we have to change here to get another bus, which will take us to the boat, which will take us back to Oslo. We can actually, this bus actually does, in the other direction, go to Oslo. Um, but the boat's more exciting. Here we are back at Big Doines where we started there's the Fram Museum which claims to be the best museum in Norway which it's you know it's one of the best museums we've been to so far I'll say that 
That's the Contiki Museum that is closed now. And there's also the Norwegian Maritime Museum, which is also closed. So we're just going to get a boat back to Oslo. Well, we're in Oslo, but back to the city centre. As it turns out, the Fram Museum is the one museum that is closed, that is open past four o'clock. It closes at five, uh, so it's probably not wouldn't have made sense to go to it first in hindsight. But uh, never mind. Here comes our ferry. So we've now had a delicious dinner and we have encountered a bit of a problem um, just with Oslo in general, not during the summer, is that the evenings are kind of difficult to do anything with because all the museums are, clo are closed and it gets quite cold so you don't really want to do anything outdoorsy either. So we're kind of stuck for something to do. So since we bought the 24 hour Oslo pass, which gives us free access on public transport, uh, we have resorted to doing a pointless loop around Oslo with the tram and metro just so we can say we've ridden the Oslo Metro because uh, we really have n nothing else to do. some shared tram and bus infrastructure here at Stora. Quite interesting. Anyway, we're now going to hop on the T-Bain, which is going to take us back into the city. We've come to kind of the, what looks like the edge of the main bit of the city. We've got a ring road there as well. Just out of the tunnel. Now hop back onto a tram again. Day three, there's some anti-Nazi graffiti. Today we are leaving, but for, we've got a full day first. We're going to start off the day at the National Gallery. So as it turns out, the National Gallery only opens at 11. So we were gonna go to the gallery and then go to the station to drop off our bags. So we've just done a little swap and now we're going over to the station. <laughs> and we first need to find a tram, but we suspect this is not actually an active piece of tramway, but a spare loop. Uh, so we're trying to find the nearest actual tram stop. Nope, 
I was wrong. This is an actual piece of tramway, and just to prove it, here is a tram. Which we won't get on because we're nowhere near the stop. There is, however, an, inact an inactive piece of tramway here, and I know this one's inactive because there's no electric wires. I don't know if they're renewing it, or they're taking it away, or they're adding it. No idea. So it's now past 11, we had breakfast in the station and now we've walked back to the National Gallery, which is now open. Okay, so watch this. So we have now done the National Gallery, our Oslo Pass has now expired and we're now walking to the harbour to get on a boat again this time just a round trip uh, on a, a fjord cruise about two hours we'll get to see some nice scenery so this is our boat the helena unlike yesterday's it is an actual sailboat and now we know why this is going to take two hours <laughs> and off we go Uh, we did figure out that these sails are just for decoration. This, is, this boat does actually have an engine.
Hello and welcome back. Yes, I said it. So we're now off the boat. We just went to the Astrup Fernley Museum, which contained exactly four types of art. Type 1. Oh wow, that's actually a pretty good piece of art. Type 2. What am I looking at? Type 3. Oh my god, get that out of my face, Jesus. And type 4. The kind of thing that you'd scroll past on Instagram and go, yeah, okay. So anyway, we've also just had dinner and we're now heading to the station. Oslo station to get our train back to Torp from where we will fly home to Manchester. So this is kind of the last 15 minute walk through Oslo. It's a pretty good city. Weather was a bit disappointing except for Friday. Friday was nice but today is not so nice but I'm quite a fan of this city in general I think. So we are now Oslo Central waiting for our train back to Torp. Since we have a bit of time here I've made another aided train spotting episode. Um, just to piss off the people who don't like foreign train spotting episodes so you can find that in the link in the description below if you are watching this more than a few days after this is uploaded we're getting off at Torp Airport in Sanderford Sanderfjord and it is of course Stadenflirt these by the way are very nice on the inside Final thoughts, Oslo, Mum? Well, even if I never get back here in my lifetime, it was worth a good weekend. Yeah, I might come back. Maybe not to live here, but definitely come back. Mm. I like NSB, it's very reliable. <laughs> and the city is very livable, although the weather, the weather was a bit, a bit disappointing. Thank you. 